Okay, guys, we have made it to the quadratic formula. So I'm solving the quadratic functions using the quadratic formula. The solutions to the quadratic function are the points where the parabola crosses the x-axis. I feel like a broken record. I hope you know this. The solutions, also known as the roots, the x-intercepts, and zeros are the x values when y equals zero, or when we set the equation equal to zero, when y equals zero. All right, so two solutions looks like this. It's a u, it can either go up or down, and it crosses the x-axis in two places. One solution looks like this. Again, it can go up, whoops, <laughs> up or down. And um, the vertex will be the solution when there's only one solution. So right here, you'll see the vertex will, and you already know how to find the vertex, will be the solution when there is only one solution. So the vertex will be the solution when there is only one solution. All right, no solution looks like this. It's floating up above the x-axis, or it's floating below the x-axis. All right, so it's never touching that x-axis. And um, when a quadratic function cannot be factored, right, because you guys are comfortable with factoring now, you can use the quadratic formula to find the solutions. The quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic. So it might not work with square roots. It might be too hard to graph. You can't, you might not be able to factor it, but you can always use the quadratic formula, even when it's factorable. So the quadratic function in standard form is y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. The quadratic formula is x equals negative, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here, b plus or minus, right, because it's a square root. Well, you'll see that it's a square root parentheses b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. The way I teach it as the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical party because he was so square he missed out, right, missed out negative, on four awesome chicks. The party was over at 2 a.m. So the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical party because he was so square. He missed out on four awesome chicks. The party was over at 2 a.m. Because um, in real life, when we're at school, you actually have to have this memorized. You won't be able to have it next to you while you're taking your test. So that's one way to memorize it especially when you go to take um, the SAT or ACT. Okay, so before you can plug A, B, and C into the quadratic formula, the equation must be set equal to zero. So it has to be equal to zero and written in standard form. Right, the standard form of the equation, and it has to be equal to zero. So if we look here at number one, we're going to get started on our bazillion um, uh, examples. Um, it is not in standard form. I have to move this 4 over. 
So I'm going to do that and I'm going to get 6x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight these just so um, we can continue with our color coding for the start. Maybe not all of them, but the first couple, that's for sure. Um, and orange. Okay, so what I always like to do is I like to write my A, B's, and C's up here. So I know that A equals 6. I know that B equals 5. And I know that C equals negative 4. All right, so I'm going to take those and I'm going to plug them into the quadratic equation. So, I mean quadratic formula. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to say that x equals negative, right, because it's negative, and then my b value, which is going to be 5, so plus or minus the square root, and I'm just going to write the fraction 2, and I'm going to say 5, and it's going to be squared minus 4 times my a value, which is 6, times my c value, which is a negative 4, all over 2 am, right, times my a value, 6. Okay, and now I'm going to start simplifying. I'm not going to use colors now. All right, so I'm going to have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus negative 96 all over 12. Well, I know that these two become positive, so I end up with, whoops, I forgot to do the plus or minus here, guys, sorry. I end up with negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 121, when I add those two together, all over 12. All right, and then I take the square root of 121, so negative 5 plus or minus 11 all over 12. Okay, it's plus or minus, right? So I have two problems I need to work out here. I'm going to go ahead and do the first one up here. I'm going to do negative 5 plus 11 all over 12, which will give me 6 over 12, which reduces down, right? They're both divisible by 6, so 1 and 2. For this one, I would get x equals 1 half. And for the next one, I would do negative 5 minus 11 over 12, which is negative 16 over 12. And again, those are both divisible by 4. So negative 4 and a 3, if it keeps writing. And I end up with x equals negative 4 over 3. So my answers are this first one, x equals 1 over 2, and negative 4 over 3. Okay, so it's a lot, right? But if you can't factor it, then it's going to be um, really hard to solve. So that's why we have the quadratic formula. Okay, first things first, get it into standard form. So plus 24, plus 24, and I end up with x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals 0. This is my a. This is my b. And this is my C. So A equals 1. B equals negative 10. And C equals 24. C equals 24. And now we're going to plug it into the quadratic. So I'm going to do X equals negative 
negative 10, right? Because it's minus, but then that 10 is also negative, plus or minus the square root. And again, my negative 10 squared minus 4 times my A, which is 1, times my C, which is 24, all over 2 times 1. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. All right, well, two negatives here make a positive, so I have 10 plus or minus the square root of 100, 10, negative 10 squared, um, is 100, and then minus 96, 4 times 1 times 24, all over 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. So now I'm left with 10 plus or minus square root of 4, all over 2. All right, well, the square root of 4 is 2, so I have 10 plus or minus 2, all over 2. Okay, so now I have two problems to solve. I have 10 plus 2 over 2, which is going to be 12 over 2, which will give me x equals 6. And then I have 10 minus 2 over 2, which is 8 over 2, which gives me x equals 4. So my answers, my x's, my roots, my solutions, my x-intercept, my zeros, would be x equals 6 and 4. All right, so let's do the rest of our examples. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and write the steps here for you. Um, all right, first thing we're going to do, set equation equal to 0. That's the first thing you do. Second thing you do is identify what your A, B, and C are. Third thing, plug it into the quadratic. formula, oops, <laughs> plug it into the quadratic formula and simplify. Okay, so lots of steps, um, but it does get easier, guys, so don't, don't stress. Okay, let's move to these last final four examples. If you guys want to pause me and try one on your own, maybe this number three here, go for it. It it's worth it, right? I mean, it's not going to do anything to hurt you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to get it equal to zero, so I'm going to subtract three and subtract three, and I will get negative x squared plus seven x minus three equals zero. My a is going to be a negative one. My b will be a positive seven and my C will be a negative three. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug those into the quadratic formula. X equals negative seven plus or minus the square root of seven squared minus four times negative one times negative three all over two times negative 1. Okay, so we're going to simplify here, and we're going to get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49, because 7 squared is 49, minus 12, because negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, but positive 4 times 3 is a, a negative 3 is a negative 12, and all over negative 2. 2 times negative 1 is 2 negative two, sorry. All right, so now we have negative seven plus or minus the square root of 37 all over negative two. Okay, well, you can't take the square root 
of a prime number, right? So your answer is technically x equals negative 7 plus or minus, right, two solutions, the square root of 37 all over 2. What? <laughs> 2. Make that look like a 2. Okay. So if you wanted to write that as an ordered pair, say it's a standardized test and they're saying write it as an ordered pair, and this was your answer, that's fine. All you would do, solutions written as ordered pairs. You would just take the negative seven, so negative seven, plus, not the minus this time, rad 37 all over negative 2, comma 0, because remember your y is always going to be a 0. That would be one of them. The other one would be negative 7 minus rad 37 over 2, uh, over negative 2, comma 0. So you're going to need to take the positive version, write the plus, and the minus version, and that would be written as an ordered pair. Okay. So let's try this right here. Um, it's already written in standard form, so we can see that our a is equal to 1, our b is equal to 2, and our c is equal to negative 7. So we're just going to go ahead and plug that into the quadratic. I'm going to say x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 all over 2 times 1. All right, so let's simplify. Negative 2 plus or minus 4 minus negative 28 all over 2. Well, we see here that two negatives make a positive, so we end up with negative 2 plus or minus rad 32 all over 2. Okay, well this time that's not a prime, right? So we think of the, two, the biggest perfect square that can go into 32. And in that case, if you don't know what the biggest perfect square, you can just go ahead and do them over to the side. That would be 16 as our perfect square, and 2 would be our prime, which means the 16 is what we're going to take the square root of. So we're going to have negative 2 plus or minus 4 rad 2, the guy that had to stay behind, all over 2. So here's the tricky part. Maybe you guys can see that this number, this number, and this number, they're all divisible by 2, right? So you can simplify it, but here's the thing. You can only simplify, you can only simplify when all three all three numbers outside the radical are divisible by the same number. So you can only simplify when all three numbers outside the radical are divisible by the same number. Okay, so in this case they are. They're all divisible by 2. So this would become a negative 1, this would become 2, and this would become 1. Meaning that our answer would be x equals 2, ah, sorry, negative 1 plus or minus 2 rad 2 all over 1. Um, or you don't need that over 1, so you could say x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2 rad 2 as your answer. And remember, this plus or minus indicates the two different um, solutions. Okay, so already in standard form for us, right? 
I'm going to identify my A, which is going to be 4, my B, which is going to be a negative 12, and my C, which is going to be a 9. And I'm going to go ahead and plug them into the quadratic. So x equals 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 9 all over 2 times 4. All right, we'll simplify a little. Oh, and we'll end up with 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 144. Hmm, we haven't seen anything like that before. Over 8. All right, well, 12 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. Okay, square root of 0. When there is a 0 under the square root, there will be one solution. When there is a 0 under the square root, there will be one solution. All right, so see that there's a zero right there. There's only going to be one solution, which is going to be 12 plus zero over eight, which x equals 12 over eight. But those are both able to be reduced by four. So that would become three and two. And we would say that x is equal to three over two. And our very last <laughs> problem in the examples here. All right, so it's already written in standard form. Hooray, hooray. I have a equals two, b equals five, and c equals four. Okay, let's plug it in. We will have x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4 all over 2 times 2. And we will simplify. So negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 32 all over 4. And we'll simplify some more. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 7, uh-oh, all over 4. Negative under your radical. No solution. So when there is a negative inside the square root, there will be no solution. Again, remember that. When there is a negative inside the square root. There will be no solution. And that's it guys, the quadratic formula. Yay, hooray, you finally learned it. That was the goal of Algebra 1. Um, come to office hours if you have any questions, Tuesdays, 12.30 to 1.30. Um, and, or email me, send me a message on um, GC, Google Classroom, and I will hopefully see you and talk to you soon. Bye.